So let's start with a warm-up problem where we're simplifying expressions um, where we're multiplying the factors. So we have a factor of 5 and a factor of 6x minus 1. And so this is in parentheses and the 5 is outside. So we can distribute the 5 inside to try to simplify. So we would have 30x, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Now these two are not like terms because this is an x and this is a 5. So I can't combine any further than this. So I'll leave my answer like this. This one, it gets interesting because there's an x in front and then there is an x inside. So if there are two x's that you are multiplying, one of the rule of thumb is that if x times x is going to give you x squared, and then x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Now, when I look at these two here, this is an x squared, and this is x to the first power. So technically, there's like a 1 here. And whenever they're different powers, you can't combine them. So these are actually not like terms. Even though they both have x's, you can't combine them because the powers are different. So we'll just leave our answer like this. Now, this third one here gets a bit interesting. This is an x to the first power being multiplied to x to the second power. Anytime you're multiplying two x's, you add the exponent. So this would end up being x cubed. Like, think about it. When we were multiplying this x with this x here, they both were x to the first power. So when I multiply x times x to the first power, I add the two exponents, and that's how I got x squared that was right here. Same thing for this case. If I take 1 plus 2, I get x to the third power. So a general rule of thumb is, so this part's important, if you have an x and it's being multiplied by another x, you take their exponents and you add them in order to simplify. That's only when you're multiplying, not when you're um combining x's so this one they're joined by minus sign so you wouldn't try to add the exponents only when you are multiplying x's do you add the exponents all right so this next one is what we call a binomial a binomial is basically um, an expression that has two terms so this factor here has two terms it has an x and a seven and this has an x and a four so this is a binomial this is a binomial six x minus one is a binomial so a binomial means two terms so we're going to multiply this out and there's a technique you use to multiply it out and you might have learned it in algebra one some of you might have some of you might not have but I will go over it. In order to multiply a binomial, two binomials, you take the first term in each parentheses and you multiply. So x times x is x squared. So we use a method called foiling. F stands for first. And what that's talking about is I took the first term in each parentheses and I multiplied. The next part is O, and O stands for outer. So outer is talking about the outer number, so this X is considered the outer number, and four is considered the outer number of the, um, the parentheses. So X times four gives me positive four X. And so O stands for outer. The next part here, after I've distributed this x to the first term and the second term, then I can now move on to the negative 7. So the negative 7 is considered our inner term. And I'm going to multiply it by the x, which is also considered the inner term. So we're going to multiply the two inner terms together. So negative 7 times x is negative 7x. Put a minus sign here. And so I stands for inner because I multiply the two inner terms together. Now, this negative 7 still need to distribute to the positive 4. So if I were to do that, this would be negative 7 times um, positive 4. So that gives me negative 28. And so L stands for last. 
Notice how this is the last term and this is also the last term in the parentheses. So I multiply the two last numbers together to get negative 28. All right, and so from there, I wanna combine the like terms. The only like terms here are the middle terms. So 4x minus 7x, 4 minus 7 is negative 3x. And I'll bring down the x squared and I'll bring down the negative 28. And I can see this is an x squared, this is x to the first power, and this is a 28. There are no like terms here because they're all different powers. They're all, um, this one's just a constant so I can't combine with anything here. And so this is my final answer. So one thing I wanna mention about combining like terms is that when you're combining like terms, they need to have the same base. So if they're an X, they need to combine with another X, but they also need to be the same exponent. So like, even though this base is an X and this base is an X, they have different exponents. That's a square and that's a one. So you can't combine them. So a little side note here when collecting like terms, have to have the same base and exponents. So that might be a nice note to have to the side. All right, so let's practice this foiling method. And we're also gonna learn something about factoring. So foiling, if you take a look here, is when you have two sets of binomial that are in parentheses and you multiply everything out, combine the like terms, and get what we call a trinomial. So we went from two binomials to one trinomial. And notice how this trinomial has three terms. That's why it's called a trinomial. So tri means three, nomial means term, so three terms, whereas this only has two terms. And I also want to mention that this trinomial here is a quadratic equation in standard form, which will play out later when we tie this in with quadratic equations. So let's practice one more time where we FOIL out. So here I have two binomials again, and I wanna FOIL this out to get the trinomial. And I want us to also notice some patterns here as we're FOILing. So to FOIL, we're taking the first term, x here, and multiplying it to the per second parentheses. So I'll have x times x, which is x squared, x times negative four, which is negative four x. Once you have distributed this x to both numbers, you can move on to the second term, which is positive one. So now I'm gonna take the positive one and multiply that to the x. So that gives me positive one x, and then one times negative four is negative four. Once I do this, I start to notice that the middle terms, again, will combine. So I'm just gonna add the two numbers. Negative four plus one gives me negative three. And that's gonna be my middle term because these two are both in the middle. I have an x squared to the side and a negative four off to the right side. And so I can't combine anymore because these are all different exponents. And so I have my trinomial, I have three terms. But what I want us to notice is a few patterns here. You will start to notice that the middle terms always add, right? So if you take a look at the numbers four and negative four, if I were to add them, one and negative four, I get negative three. So the middle number or x to the first power, this b, you always add or sum up the numbers. So if you have your two numbers, you add them and you get the b value. To get c, you'll start to notice if you take one times negative four, the two numbers, and you multiply, you get the last number. One times negative four gave me negative four, which is the last number. So to get c, you multiply your two numbers. So the middle number you add, the outer number you multiply. So what if I gave you the trinomial first and you had to work backwards? Could you figure out um, what are your two factors? And that's what we're gonna learn today. So take a look, you have your trinomial. What I want us to start off first is to understand what are the factors, two numbers that multiply to give me the last number. Because these two numbers multiply to give you C. So if I were to set this problem up, I need my two parentheses. I know X's are gonna be here because 
x times x gives me x squared. So I know I need to have two x's here. But I also need two numbers that go here to make a 20. So um, 20 is made up of factors like 5 times 4, 2 times 10. But I need them to add up to give me 9, negative 9 to be specific. So remember, the middle term are two numbers that add up to give you the middle term. But the last number is two numbers that multiply. So 5 and 4 multiply to give you 20. 2 and 10 multiply to give you 20. But which of these combination gives you 9? Well, 5 and 4 give you 9 if you add. So I know I need a 5 here and a 4 here. It doesn't matter which order, as long as you have them um, in your parentheses. Now I also have to think about getting a positive number when I multiply. So this is a positive 20. So when they multiplied, they had to have been either two negatives make a positive number or two positive multiply to give me a positive 20. But the middle number is a negative. So that tells me, well, in order for both numbers to add up to give me negative 9, they had to have been both negative. So let's check this out. Negative 5 times negative 4 gives me positive 20, but negative 5 plus negative 4 gives me negative 9x. So I'm going to show you and see if this works by foiling. So let's take our x, multiply it by x. So x times x is x squared x times negative 4 is negative 4x. If I take the second term, negative 5 times negative, uh, sorry, negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20. Notice how the inner terms have to combine because they are like terms. So negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9x. And so that would have combined to give you negative 9 and then 20 and the x squared would have been on the side. So just to kind of replay that for a moment, you're going to need to find the, the last number's factors and see which factors add up to give you the middle term. So let's try this with this one here. So this one is 80. Factors of 80 is 8 and 10. So do 8 and 10 add or subtract to give you the middle number? Sure, yeah. 8 and 10 are about um, 2 away from each other. That could give you a two in the middle if I am strategic about the signs. So if I think about it here, I could write down my x's, use eight and 10. And if it doesn't work, I can go back to the drawing board and figure out some other factors. So I notice it's a negative 80. That means one of these needs to be a negative sign to make a negative 80 when you multiply. So what I notice is that middle term is a negative. So maybe the bigger number is a negative. So when I add, I still have a negative sign. So I'm going to give the 10 the negative sign and the 8 the positive sign. So let's see if this works. So if I take x and multiply by x, I got x squared. If I take x and multiply by negative 10, I get negative 10x. If I take 8 and multiply it by x, I get positive 8x. If I take 8 and multiply it by negative 10, I get negative 80. So the middle terms combine because they're both x to the first power. Negative 10 plus 8, notice how the 10 is bigger and it's a negative. That would give me a negative 2 when I combine. So that's why I was saying before, if you're figuring out which one needs to be the negative and the middle terms are negative, then you probably need to make the bigger number a negative sign. And 8 times negative 10 gave me that negative 80 that I needed. So just one rule of thumb here that I want us to point out is that um, give the negative number to the bigger number. So if you notice that the middle term is negative, give the middle or whichever number, 8 or 10, whatever is bigger, the negative sign. You will notice with the next problem here, we have a 6. And so factors of 6 are 3 and 2. And so we need to see if they would add up to give me, in this case, the coefficient in the middle is a 1. Now, they don't 
Three and two don't add to give you one, but three and two could subtract to give you one if one of them is a negative sign. And so lucky for us, this six is a negative. So if the last term's a negative, that means one of them had to have been a negative in order to multiply to give you a negative six. So if I write out my factors, I have x, x, three and two, perhaps the, the three here needs to be a positive sign and the two needs to be a negative. Because what I'm thinking here is three times negative two gives me negative six, but positive three plus negative two gives me a positive one. Because I notice the middle term is positive, I'm gonna give the bigger number the positive sign. So in this case, it's the opposite of the one that we just did. So the bigger number is going to be positive because the middle term is positive. And so let's see if this works. So I would take x and I would multiply by x, so I'd get x squared. X times negative two is negative two X. Um, three times X gives me positive three X and three times negative two is negative six. So the middle term here is negative two X plus three X. So negative two plus three X gives me one X and the side terms would just come over. So I do get that negative six. So this works and I get that trinomial that I wanted. So what we just did here was kind of go backwards. I gave you the trinomial and you had to find the factors to see which, which would work. So we'll probably try out some practice problems like these here. Um, so let's practice factoring trinomials in example two and I'll go back to binomials later. But let's try out some trinomials. So if I have a trinomial here and I have to factor so let me try to get my parentheses ready. I know I should have two x's because x needs to multiply to give me the x squared, but I have a seven here. And seven doesn't have many factors. It's just seven and one. So I know seven and one have to go here. I also noticed that all of them are positive. So that's a great cue that these both need to be positive. So let's check. So I can check by taking my two numbers and multiplying and seven times one does give me seven. And if I wanna check the middle term, all I have to do is add. So seven plus one gives me eight. So this works here. We have found the factors. This one is in terms of y, but it works the same way. Instead of x's, we'll have y's instead. Whatever letter of the alphabet they want us to do. And so I have a negative 90 here and I have a one in front of this y to the first power. So 90s are factors of nine and 10 might work. Um, there's other factors of 90, but let's first try 9 and 10. So what I notice is that this middle term is a 1. If I add 9 and 10, I don't get 1, but if I subtract, I do get 1. So in order for me to subtract, one of them has to be a negative sign. But let's look. This is a negative 90. If I have a negative 90, that means one of these had to have been a negative sign to multiply to give you a negative 90. And in this case, the middle term is positive, so the bigger number is going to be positive. So 10 is positive, nine is negative. Let's see if this works. So negative nine times 10 gives me negative 90. Negative nine plus 10 gives me one, so this does work. All right, let's try out C here. So for C, we have m squared minus five m plus six. So um, in this case, we have some m's that we're working with, so I'm gonna write m's down. Factors of six are three and two and six and one. So they need to add or subtract to give you five. All right, let's think about it. Either one of these could work, but I'll try three and two first. So three and two, if I were to write that down, they need to multiply to give me positive six. So it either is both positive or both negative to make a positive six when you multiply. But because it's a negative sign in the middle, in order for them to add to be a negative, they both had to have been a negative. So let's check if this works. Negative three times negative two does give me a positive six. Negative three plus negative two does give me a positive, I'm sorry, a negative five. So this works as my factors. So I'm no longer foiling this out to check. I'm using the method of multiplying to see if it gives me the third number and adding to give me the second number or the middle number. 
All right, so now I wanna jump back to example one because this one talks about difference of perfect squares. So there are going to be times you don't, you're not given a trinomial, instead you're given a binomial. Notice there are two terms, but this is still a quadratic because this is x squared. But anytime you notice that this is an x squared and you have a perfect squared, which means like numbers that like 9, 49, 81, um, 16, those are perfect squares because it's usually two of the same numbers that multiply to give you um, that number. So like if I take A and I square it, I should get a perfect square. So if you notice, it's a minus sign, so it has to be a difference of perfect squares. So it needs to be a minus sign. If it's a plus sign, this rule doesn't work. So if it's a minus sign, what you can do is factor. So you have your two x's, but one of them's going to be a positive and one of them's going to be negative. So when I multiply a times a, I'll get the negative a squared because one of these is negatives when I multiply. But when I add positive a with negative a, they cancel because there's the same number but opposite signs. And that's why there's not like a, a middle term here or an x to the first power. So I wanna show you with um, an example here. So this one's x squared minus nine. Now, if we, take, if we think about what two numbers that multiply to give us nine, we probably think three. Three times three gives us nine. Um, another way you can do this is just take a square root and square root of nine is three. And so if I were to find the factors, this would be two x's, one would be a positive three and the other is a negative three following this rule that one's positive, one's negative. So let's see if this works. Positive three times negative three gives me negative nine, so that does work. And positive three plus negative three cancels, so that's why there's not a middle term. If you need to see this kind of worked out, I could multiply this all out. So x times x is x squared. x times negative three is negative three x. Positive three times x is positive three x. And positive three times negative three is negative nine. Notice how the middle terms combine and they would cancel because they're opposite signs but same coefficient. So these would wipe out. That's how you get the x squared minus nine. So this is a nice handy um, rule to help you with difference of squares. So this would be my final answer as by factors. This one is also a minus sign and 49 is a perfect square. Two numbers that multiply to give you 49 is seven and seven. So this would be x plus seven and x minus seven as my two factors. Um, notice seven times negative seven gives me negative 49. If I combine them, they would cancel out the like terms. Um, I also want to mention something that people often get confused with. So let's say this is example C. If you get a problem where it's x squared and let's say there's a positive sign and you have a four. So four is a perfect square. Four is two times two, right? And so most people will start and write it like this as x minus two and x or x plus two and x minus two. It doesn't matter the order of the signs, but looking at this, people will factor it this way, but it's not correct because you'll notice if I were to FOIL this out, I would get x squared minus two x plus two x minus four and the middle terms would cancel and I would be left with x squared minus four. So this would give out a difference of square, not a positive sign. So I just wanna say that whenever you have a sum of a perfect square, so if you have a plus sign in between them, that means that this is not factorable. So you couldn't factor this even if you tried. And that has to do with um, trying to get the middle term is just not possible. So be very careful when you're factoring a binomial. It needs to be a minus sign and they need to be perfect square in order to factor. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll look at something called slide and divide factoring.